And hey guys, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Pokemaniac, coming back at you with yet another episode of Pokemon Platinum. In the last episode, we, well, we spent an inordinate amount of time uh, guiding our, the, I guess you would call her the wayward youth, Mira, uh, out of the wayward cave. Uh, then we explored the secret entrance of the cave and got two of probably, arguably, the strongest things in Pokemon Platinum. We caught ourselves a Wild Gibble, and we also got TM26, which is Earthquake. And those two, they go together like peanut butter and jelly, like ketchup and mustard, like, uh, uh, well, I really don't have anything else that goes together nearly as well as those two things. But that's neither here nor there. In this episode, we are continuing on uh, to Route 207 and Trainer... Oh, yeah, I, I remember the Trainer Tips. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got it, we got it. I wish... I really wish you could just cut that off, but apparently you can't. And, oh, well, just because we miss Mira so gosh darn much, they're going to give us a couple more double battles on our way proceeding through Route 207. So let's see how the team's looking right now. Um, yeah, you know you know what? Yeah, I, I kind of like this pairing. Uh, Zuko and Warbeak, you know, the two OGs, uh, two OGs from the real OT. Oh, let's go. Go for it, my Pokemon! I'll do my best, too. But is your best good enough? Go! Do it, my Pokemon! I'll work hard, too! Yes, but is it hard enough? I could have phrased that better. Anywho, we got ourselves Camper Anthony and Picnicker Lauren. They're wearing the exact same, kind of like Boy Scout Girl Scouts uh, here in the Pokemon universe. And look at that! We see ourselves a Chimchar and a Pachirisu, two really cute Pokemon. Uh, but also, notably, one of them is a starter. Once again, it is very nice that you can actually see every single Pokemon in the Sinnoh Pokedex uh, just from battling the trainers. I can't tell you how nice that is. Uh, but with that, let us see a Flame Wheel. I'm hoping that that Pachirisu is not going to cause us too much of an issue. Uh, I am a little nervous about it with Warbeak out here, but Zuko's Flame Wheel should do a nice... Oh my... My word. That rodent is thick. And we are paying the consequence... Oh, okay. Well, I, I guess so is Warbeak. Because <laughs> that didn't do nearly as much as I thought it was going to do. Uh, and that poor little Chimchar taunting, taunting our Warbeak. We really weren't... Uh, gonna set, try to set up or anything, so I guess that works out. Maybe that would have prevented Endeavor, but... Speaking of Endeavor, let's use Flame Wheel here on this Pachirisu once again. And can we get a burn? No, we can't get a burn. Uh, another Spark, but is that gonna get a Paralysis? No, it is not. Okay, good. Uh, wing Attack should finish off this Chimchar, no problem. Easy peasy. Uh, and a uh, nice little bit of experience points, not too bad. And then let's just finish off the Pachirisu. We know we're faster. Uh, not Warbeak's not faster, though, so we use Quick Attack with the Warbeak. Finish off this Pachirisu. Oh, lickety split. There it goes, that Quick Attack. That, it really makes a difference having two stab priority moves in Mach Punch and Quick Attack. Like, just so good. Oh, we lost. Oh, we lost. Oh, that's so cute. Look at that. Well, we got a little thing going on there. Look, yeah, look at you two. Oh, have fun picnicking and camping or whatever you kids do nowadays. Oh, so cute. Anyway, coming over here, we find ourselves... You guessed it. A super pot ion, because we can't ever have anything else in this uh, generation. Um, uh, Autumn's still a level ahead, so I'm still going to keep Zuko up front. Even if this hiker does happen to have any big rock-type Pokemon, I think... Uh, Zuko will be able to do it. I just got through Mount Coronet, but I've still got energy to burn. All right, a very, very hardy hiker we fight today. And uh, Justin, this just in, <laughs> Geodude's not gonna survive Zuko. Uh, we've proven that many a time already, so. Let's go ahead and smack it in the face with a mock punch. And, uh, oh. Well, thanks a lot, bud! That's just some wasted experience points. I should have kept my mouth shut. That... I... I he totally responded. Uh, oh my he... Dude really said, like, Oh, my Geodude's not gonna beat this Chimchar or this Monferno. I'll just take it down with me. Oh my gosh. 
That was wild. I was not expecting to see an exploding Geodude. Um, but, oh, and I also wasn't expecting... <laughs> <laughs> this Pokemon looks ridiculous. Say hello to Nosepass once again if you remember uh, third gen. And rah, Sam. Uh, you've seen this Pokemon before, but if you haven't, take a look at this goofy rock with a giant sniffer on it. That's right, Nosepass. It is a Pokemon we haven't seen thus far in this generation, and we can fuse it. Uh, Nosepass, it's not super great. You... Nosepass is incredibly defensive. Uh, much more so than Onyx's and Geodude's. Not really only just in stat, but just the fact that it is a pure rock type. And I can't tell you how much that actually does for this Pokemon. Like, not being quad weak to grass and water, it just makes it so much stronger. Whoops, taken down easily. Oh, we're gonna have to go he heal up our... Well, hang on, let's see if we have a... Uh... Do we have any revives on us? I'm sure we do. Oh, let's see. This is not gonna reflect well on the friendship checker. Um, we do, we have two of them as, as a matter of fact. And since I'm probably not gonna be using them anywhere else, I can use them right now. Use some of those super pot ions. You know what, maybe I shouldn't have been complaining too much about finding super potions on the ground. But yeah, nose pass also fun, funny, funnily, funny, funnily, funnily enough? Funnily enough in this generation is one of those Pokemon that gets itself in evolution into Probopass, which is a steel rock type. Uh, and honestly, it's a pretty decent Pokemon. Uh, cool wall, learn some really interesting moves uh, you wouldn't think it would. So, I mean, if you didn't like a Nose Pass in the last generation, uh, you can give it a try in this generation. It very specifically evolves literally only in this place, though. So, just make sure you know what you're doing before you level up your Nose Pass to level 100 and wonder exactly why it did not evolve. But enough, uh, enough delay, uh, and I was delaying for a good reason, because before we enter this cave, we see Sensei coming to visit us for a while. Hi, Jake. How's your Pokedex coming along? How's your Pokedex coming along? Me? Uh, somewhere between Fantastic and, uh, Hopeless. Aw, it's okay, Sensei. But this isn't about me. I've got something nice for you. <laughs> My sensei always looking after me. Jake, choose which hand you want. Ooh, okay, so, right or left? So my dominant hand is the right hand, but that would, uh, facing Dawn this way, that would be her left hand. So maybe I should go with, is it my right or is it your right? If it's my right, maybe I should go right because then psychologically speaking, she put the good one in the less dominant hand, thinking that I would be less likely to pick it. And Okay, okay you know what, does, does, doesn't matter. I see. So you want the v the versus seeker? All right. So the versus seeker is what I got confused with. With Looker gave us the ver you know the VS recorder. This is the VS seeker. I'm impressed, Jake. You know what's important. <laughs> well, shoot, it was all uh, intuitive. And we get ourselves the VS seeker, and that will let us challenge trainers who we've already fought, which is super useful if you're ever in need of good experience or money. Using that VS seeker, you can find trainers who want to rematch with you. Oh, Jake, do you also have a book itch? <laughs> Don, what trainer would be caught dead without a poke itch? Yep, you do. You can have this too then. You deserve it for all your hard work, Jake. Oh, man. You know, I know I was a little cold on Dawn, like when the whole when the, when the game started and everything, and you know she was trying to teach us stuff. But oh, she turned out to be really really sweet. And we get ourselves the Pokechap, the dowsing machine, which is one of the most super useful apps you can get for your Pokech. And it doesn't even come from the Pokech company. The dowsing machine app locates unseeable items. The dowsing machine is something you should touch off. You could have phrased that better. <laughs> It'll tell you if there's an item on the ground that you can't see. I think there's something here even. You should try it out. Okay, let's keep working on our Pokedexes. Professor Rowan is counting on us. Oh, you had to bring him into the equation, didn't you? But yeah, and with that, guys, we have gotten ourselves a brand new car. Okay, not a new car, but we got ourselves a new Bogich app. And uh, well, we, once again, we have to find it. Yeah, say hello to the dowsing machine or this generation's item finder, which I would posit is like probably the second best uh item finder you can get on like handheld devices um not including switch because i mean once you get to the switch I mean, they don't really hide uh 
items with item you don't have to use the item finder as nearly as much but if you tap it it kind of gives out oh see there we go it gives out a little radar and as you can see the little blinking uh, light is in fact an item so if we head over a couple of steps oh we get ourselves a great ball which is just great um, and since you know Don mentioned it to us I suppose we should just use how do you get up here oh you just come right down here we should use the item finder a little bit frequently while we're here uh, as you can see the radar itself does not actually oh we, we got hit we got hit boys um, looks like it's up on that platform though uh, the item finder itself um, you know does not scan the entirety of the area uh, it represents the entire screen but divided into four quadrants and it'll cover about an entire quadrant so the way I do it is I hit the middle and then you know the four quadrants to see if there's anything there and then you just kind of follow it until you get to the item uh, but in that instance uh, I think we can switch back to our uh, top screen dominated uh, oh okay just I'm trying to organize my thoughts and I wear shorts the whole year I've got energy to burn oh just like that hiker are they comfy and easy to wear though that's the real question that's the real question youngster Back in my day, youngster, youngster Austin, shorts were comfy and easy to wear. And he's got himself a weasel, which is not fantastic news for Zuko. But it's not too bad, because it's level 18, so I'm not super scared of it. But I think Maytag can come out here and make quick work of it. Look at, oh. Still, oh. Get predicted, kid. Oh my gosh. Maybe you should focus more on Pokemon battling than your shorts. How about that? Huh? All right, so a nice shockwave should be able to knock this thing out, no problem. Oh, and a crit. Maytag's too good. Maytag's too OP for this. You gotta ban him. And Zuko grows to level 24, which is super nice. And, oh, I thought Maytag was also gonna grow to level 24. And, hey, it's Gligar. We've already seen Gligar, but this is also time for Autumn to shine. Uh, once again, we, I mean, we saw Gligar in the wild when we were heading up towards, uh, when we were on Route 206, heading up towards Wayward Cave, but uh, again, I just, I cannot recommend Gligar enough. And also, do, does this happen to anyone else? Because this happens to me with some frequency, and it's funny that it's happened to me with two purple Pokemon uh, in the past two generations. So, looking at this Gligar, like, in 4th gen, it looks almost too purple. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the way I recall Gligar, he's a little more pink. Like, a little more autumn. Like, a little more Shellos colored uh, in my memory. So, when I see this, I automatically think that it's a shiny Gligar. Because, you know, oh, it's got to be a different color. And it's not. It's just kind of how it looks in this generation. But the same thing happens to me in third generation. When I see Zubats for the first time. Like, if I have not played Emerald in a hot minute. And, you know, I'm in um, uh, Duford. And I go into the cave, and a Zubat pops up, it looks so purple. And I always kind of panic, because I'm also not paying attention, because, you know, you just run into the cave encounters. And so I see this Zubat, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, that's not the right color. Um, and I, I just wonder if I didn't miss the shiny animation. So I always end up catching the first Zubat I see, and then, you know, it just turns out that it's not shiny at all, and I just wasted a Pokeball on a Zub Well, I can't say I wasted it. I think... Zubat's a pretty good Pokemon overall. Uh, Luxio, the evolved form of Shinx. I don't know if we've seen one of these in action before. But yeah, I mean, it does. It just looks like Shinx, but, you know, hasn't shaved uh, in a hot minute. Hasn't shaved that stubble. You know, that teen stash. Uh, you know, got the little fluffs on the cheeks. But with that... Oh, again, too easy. It's a little bit thicker uh, than we're used to with Shinx's. Shinx eye? No, we're not going through that again. I could win with just energy. Nothing's really that easy. <laughs> you picked the wrong trainer to do battle with, kid. All right, and let's check real fast if there's an item around here. Hitting those quadrants. Nope. All right, so we move on. And this is nice, too, because then we don't actually have to worry about, uh, you know, our you know spidey senses or our item senses tingling. I'll throw Autumn up front since we got a hiker over here. And we're going to move on over here, fight the hiker, and then get whatever item's hidden over there. <laughs> Laughter brings good fortune. Damn. Gave him a powerful voice. That was almost a Wario laugh, too. <laughs> hiker Kevin. 
Bye, Kevin. All right, he's got himself a Geodude. Too easy. Autumn's coming out here. Look, look at a little Autumn ready for battle. Not even hesitating. Just kind of like moonwalks back and forth. You know, kind of like jabs its neck out because you know, he's intimidating. And that Geodude's down. I'm guessing we got three more Geodude. Three more Geodudes to go. Or it's going to be two Geodudes and an Onyx because they like doing that. So it's like, surprise, it was actually an Onyx, not four Geodudes in a row. We mixed it up. I don't mean to be salty, it's just we've seen so many Geodudes and Onyxes up to this point. It's like old, it's old hat. Like, it's not even cool anymore. And bro didn't get the memo. Nose passes are all the rage right now. Like, don't know why you're still working with Geodude. Which I can't really say too much about because <laughs> I got... Uh, so, you know how every now and again I'll like, you know, if there's a difference in the games... Well, the versions of 4th Gen, you know, between Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, uh, I'll, like, you know, throw up uh, you know, Diamond gameplay footage because I'm playing through Diamond alongside of Platinum. Um, I caught a shiny Geodude uh, way back uh, in Orberg City, in the Orberg Mine, and I told you it was an Onyx. I told you they were going to fake us out. And uh, I just ran into a shiny Geodude, and so I'm like, well, I wasn't planning on using it, but now I kind of have to, and so I, I, I'm not... I don't have room to talk uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, hikers using Geodudes and Onyxes, because I'm, I'm using one. All right, and once again, Autumn just cleans up like it's nobody's business. <laughs> There's nothing to laugh about. That's nothing to laugh about? I don't know. Again, too fast. Too fast. Uh, okay, now where was this item? Come on. Don't make me, don't make, don't make me use the item fighter. Oh, and it's a rare candy. I'm glad we found that, because that is a phenomenal item. Uh, moving right along. Is there any around here? I just really like, I also, I like the concept. Like, there are other item finder, there are other item finders of like dowsing machines. Vi, very nice. In other generations that are quote unquote like, easier to use or make it, much easier to find items particularly fifth gen's item finder it's so nice like that that is like peak item finder design um but i kind of like i like the hunt uh, as they say you know and anything around here usually what they'll do is they'll kind of like front load a bunch of good items when as soon as you get yourself an item finder so that you think so that you're like oh wow how, you, how useful uh oh there's there's one over there okay um that, Wonder why we stopped short. Now we gotta go all the way back and loop around. Uh, can we get up there? That is the question. Yes, we can. And we can also get into another. I was gonna switch Pokemon, but okay. Okay, okay. Let's be quick about this. That's what she said. Um, anyway, uh, the Battle Girl Helen. All right, she's got herself a Machop. I am never not shocked by the power pose of this thing. Like, my goodness. Like, dude, have have a little bit of shame. Like, come on, man. Put on some shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. Anyway, let's get Warbeak out here, who we should have had up front in the first place. Uh, oh, Seismic Toss, so that Intimidate did not actually matter. Seismic Toss is a pretty useful move in certain instances, particularly earlier in the game. Or if you have a Pokemon that can't actually... That's a wall and doesn't output damage. Because Seismic Toss will always do the amount of damage equal to the level of the user. So that Machop was level 21, it did 21 damage to us with the um, Seismic Toss. And that happens regardless of what type the Pokemon is, how many buffs or debuffs you, either of you have. Um, it's just always going to do that set amount of damage, which is really good. Um, oh, hello, Metatite, once again. Which is really good when it comes to Pokemon like, I don't know, Blissey? It's a really great example of that because Blissey's damage output is not great because of how, you know, much of a special tank it is. So being able to have a decent damage output, you know, consistently, while also being a wall, it's just, it's nice. Nice, makes it, makes it a little more usable. Oh yeah, let's do this again. Oops, I'm out of Pokemon. Alright, and uh, we weren't at all interested in you. We were actually, oh, I want that item. But unfortunately, we can't get it. Uh, just yet, but coming right here. Oh, uh, two, uh, not another revive. All right, we're rolling in it, fellas. 
we ain't ever gonna die. Uh, and then, let's see, uh, let's switch out, because Autumn is now massively overleveled. Uh, let's throw a Warbeak up front, why not? And let us enter. Mount Coronet. Now, Mount Coronet's like dead center of Cinna. Oh, look at that. Didn't even have to use my item finder. The, the, the item senses are still tingling. Uh, Mount Coronet is dead center of Sinnoh, and it's kind of going to kind of act like a um, a hub, uh, if you will. See, okay, like usually I cut out these, but like look at this Zubat. Look at it. See how blue it is? That's a Zubat. Now take a look at like third generation Zubat, like in Pokemon Emerald. The, that that's like really really purple. You'd mistake it for a shiny. But anywho, moving right along. Is there anything here? Oh, my item senses have failed me. Or did they? Haha! -ha! Oh, <laughs> in another revive in the span of like 10 seconds. Um, they're really stocking us up. So it just wasn't in the... It was here, it just wasn't in the rocks. So I'm not a total loser. And... Oh! This guy. According to one theory, Mount Coronet is where the Sinnoh region began. <laughs> In a newly created world. I like that kind of like, what are we looking at? <laughs> then then turn him back around. A world where only time flowed and space expanded. There should have been no strife. But what became of that world? Because the human spirit is weak and incomplete, strife has spread. This world is being ruined by it. I find the state of affairs to be deplorable. Oh, and didn't even ask us to move aside this time. We we know the drill, don't worry. Alright, so Emo Sonic the Hedgehog is off again. I guess technically Emo Sonic the Hedgehog would be Shadow, right? Also, why am I making so many Sonic references? This is a Pokemon game, not a Sonic game. And, and oh, uh, there was, there's an extra item. Uh... Come on. There we are. Stardust, which is nice. You can sell it at shops for high prices. And, oh, we can't get that item. There's so many. Uh, for, for as many items that we're getting, uh, there's just as many that are just out of reach. But, yeah, so Mount Coronet is going to be a hub of sorts. Um, we will enter it at least three or four different times from different locations. And it will be very, very different each and every time, which is really cool. I like what they did with that. Uh, Route 2A. Okay, I'm Mount, Mount Cornet. Say hello to Route 208. Uh, we are moving right along. And uh, so that was our first instance of Mount Cornet. Not too much going on there uh, for now. But there's a lot going on here on Route 208. I really love the design. If I beat you, will you share some food with me? Ah, uh, poor guy. No, we're going to just beat you and take all of your money that you could have used for food. Sorry, Hiker Jonathan. Uh, he's got himself an Onyx, which I'm so glad we have Warbeak up front. Ugh. But that Intimidate's gonna be nice. And, you know what, honestly though, with Warbeak at this amount of experience points, we're probably going to level up. But once again, Autumn has to come in and play cleanup, because, you know, it's really the only thing I could take down <laughs> Onyx with any efficiency. Oh, boo. Kicking up a Sandstorm. Alright. So, Sandstorm, oh, we've seen weather effects before, particularly from the, oh, I shouldn't have used Mud Bomb, I shouldn't have used, uh, Water Pulse. And look, look how fast that Onyx is, it outspeeds our Autumn, and, nice crit, buddy. Must be nice. I think, let's see how much this Mud Bomb does, it's still special attack. Eh, it's alright. But, lower that accuracy, that accuracy. Get buffeted by the Sandstorm. And finish it, oh, nice. See, that's something I've been running into a lot. Rock Tomb is a really good move, but for whatever reason, it feels like in Generation 4, accuracy is... I, I don't know if they softened it for later generations, but it feels like I miss so much more in 4th generation than I do in the more recent Pokemon games. We were starved for food, and now we're starved for a win. Oh, now I feel bad. Don't make me feel bad for be you challenged me, pal. You looked me dead in the eye and said, I'm gonna take on this kid and make him buy me some food. Can't make me feel sorry for you. 
Anywho, a super pot ion right here for Autumn. Heal up just a little bit in case we need to use them again. Ah, now this looks like a duck. Get over here. This looks like a guy that Warbeak can take down. This karate man's gonna pulverize you. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei. Grab my arm. The other arm. My other arm. All right, Black Belt. Oh, he's only got a Ma Chop. I was expecting something, you know, a little bit of a challenge. Mr. Karate Man. Mr. Rex Guando. All right. Uh, one wing attack is going to finish this up. Boom. Roasted. Now it bisected his body with that wing attack. The wing of war. Take that, Kyle. We got pulverized. All right. I think I feel like a failure because I go home to Starla every night. Forget about it. Ah, but come down here and we get ourselves some great, a great ball, not some great balls. Yikes. All right. Boop. How did... Hey, buddy. You okay down there? You need help? Rescue? Nah, he fishing. He fine. Cut. Okay, there has to be an item over here. No? Oh, I've been bamboozled. But I gotta stop doing that. See... I feel like now that uh, just a little kid, I'm supposed to be a big man like me. Could have phrased that way better. But now I, I feel like I'm trying to show off my you know hidden item finding skills like a lot more now, just because you know I I have competition and you know the dowsing machine, which will just reveal the items to me, and you know I want to flex my knowledge, but it seems to be harming me more than helping. Actually, and it's nice, too, that this guy got the memo about the nose passes, but... Uh, Autumn should, once again, make quick work of this thing. And, oh, whoosh. we did that just in time. Uh, block prevents our escape, so Autumn can't switch out, even if I wanted Autumn to switch out. Block is a useful move, uh, particularly when you're hunting certain type of Pokemon, uh, because there are a lot of Pokemon, even, even coming up uh, on this route, I believe, uh, there are Pokemon that can uh, flee from battle, or make you flee from battle. So, whether a Pokemon, wild Pokemon, whirlwinds you, roars you, uh, or uses a move to run away like Abras do with Teleport, if you got Block and you're faster, that'll keep a Pokemon there for you. Oh my, big man like me got schooled by a kid like you, but bro. Bro. Go oh my gosh, Go I, I see why he has to live in the mountains, that... Nasty! All right, homie over here still being useful to this day. And we get an ether. All right. Get ether. <sighs> PP restoring items are, I hoard those like a dragon hoard's treasure. And I end up, you know, it's like, oh, I can all, should only use it when I really need it. And then I never end up using them. And then I have a bunch of them by the end of the game uh, every single time. But coming down here. You think I would have just learned by now to use repels. I know, like, I try to be economical with them. So, you know, I don't waste them. But really, I should just... Did I not buy any... I did not buy any extra repels. Ugh. I'm a genius. Uh, but coming over here, find yourself a tiny mushroom. Uh, this one was kind of obvious, so I, d I don't think I needed the dowsing machine for that. And... This guy hiding, like, right here at the edge of the forest, and that hiker up there, this is not a safe route. Uh, what do you have to say? Don't say a word. Just take it. I need an adult. And we get the odd keystone? Well, it is odd. Give it me. Not as odd as this guy, but... Thanks! I guess? Uh, coming right along. Who do I have up front uh, at the moment? Warbeak, yeah, let's throw May to... Not Flash! Just get up there. Uh, Maytag, we're gonna send Maytag to the front lines. And battle this guy. Ooh, he's fancy because he has a beret. Ho oh, ho, you are mine. Let us create a scene. A fantastic tableau of battle. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. You know I'm French because I have <laughs> a beret on. Artist de Villon. And it, ew, he's got himself a Mime Junior. So Mime Junior is a Pokemon we haven't seen thus far. And Pokemon we're gonna wish we've never seen again after you understand what this thing evolves into. Mime Jr. is a baby form of Mr. Mime. That's right, Mr. Mime got a de-evolution, a devolution. Mr. Mime got a baby Pokemon, and it's called Mime Jr., so. Uh, 
Nice and crit. Maytag, Maytag understood the assignment. It's like, let's get this thing off the screen as fast as humanly possible. Or as fast as ghostly possible, I suppose. And Bonsly is another Pokemon, or Bonsly? Hmm. Another Pokemon we haven't seen thus far. But we shall wait for it to come out before we start harping on it. And, oh, Bonsly. I always called it Bonsly. Um, it might be Bonsly, I don't know. Like, you can pronounce it however you want, I don't care. Uh, and as you can ski, or as you can probably guess, it is a baby version of Sudowoodo, which I famously think is uh, the best Pokemon name, period. Like, hey. thanks, bud. Jeez, oh man, chill with that. You're a baby. Calm down. Uh, yeah, no, it's cute. It looks like a little potted uh, bonsai tree. Oh, it should be bonsai, huh? Because it's like, it's sly. Bon I've just, uh, mind you, I'm a glow with these bunny hole. I, I have just now figured out that, yes, it is in fact pronounced bonsai, and it goes along with... Such a good name, such a good name. Okay, yeah, no, that, that really determines it for me. Um, I guess we'll throw Zuko up front. Because I want him reaching 25. Just cause I, I'm a little biased. And what do you have to say for yourself? Oh, you want to have a battle? I was meaning to enter a contest, but beating you won't take long. What is a battle but a contest of the strength of your Pokemon? Aroma Lady Hannah. All right, Hannah. And she's got a... Ooh! So, ooh start out with a Roselia. And as you can see there with that, uh, that's something we don't necessarily have access to right now. I did allude to it back when we were looking at the PC a million episodes ago. Uh, but that is Pokeball decorations, like capsule, uh, Pokeball capsules. And it's cool that they just kind of throw them on trainers, you know, throughout the game uh, that you can just see. It's really nice. So we'll get that eventually. And oh, we're gonna abuse the heck out of that. And oh, okay, she is also going to have Gombi, which is a Pokemon we haven't seen thus far. If you were messing around with honey trees, you would have uh, seen it thus far, uh, but we weren't, because I, I ain't about all that. Uh, but, oh, I, I'm so sorry, Hannah. Um, she unfortunately has herself a male Combi. So Combis, they're a male and female, just like all the other Pokemon, but only the female Combis can actually evolve. So if you get a male Combi, it's just a Combi forever. Um, there's nothing you can do. But female Combies will evolve into Vespiquen, which is a really cool looking Pokemon and one of the cooler designs if you ask me. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Oh, you have us beaten. Take that. It was a contest of wills and mine won out. Uh, what's the trainer? Oh, good, more trainer tips. After berries planted, wash the color of the soil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't, well, we don't really know how to plant berries yet. I should have read that a little more. But we get some Nanab berries. This, this is B-A-N-A-N-A-S. And rat to raspberries. So we can give them the old razzle-dazzle. We got a nice variety of berries right here. This is nice. Two block berries. <laughs> Two block berries. That's fun to say. The block berry. Makes your lips pop out. Block. And... Yeah, I ain't touching that. Uh, what do we have here? Oh, the berry master's house. Free berry... This is a horrible route. We got that hiker up there talking about, oh, big man and a little kid. We got this weirdo over here who's hiding in the tree line just giving out odd keystones to kids. And we have a... Oh, it's the Berry Master's house. Hey, kid, you want some free berries? I I mean, I do, but I can't recommend anyone else doing this. Um, oh, tight. Can you imagine a kid walking to your house and not even acknowledging you, just looking at a you know, book on your table. Much ado about mulch. Okay. Which kind of mulch would you like to read about? So, yeah. Berry mechanics get much more complex. Um, we're, honestly, we're not going to be worrying about that in this playthrough. Um, but different mulches will grow different berries differently. Uh, so, anyway, what's the berry master? Everyone seems to call me the berry master. All right, so we got the underground man, the berry master, and the Pokemon professor. Jeez, I hand out berries daily because I want people to learn how wonderful they are. <laughs> You're deserving of one. And we get ourselves a tomato berry or a tomato berry. Oh, is that it? Berries are gifts of nature. I encourage you to feed berries to Pokemon. That will make them happy. Plant more berries. Make Sinnoh greener. Sinner greeno. Sinnoh greener. Um... 
Oh, yeah, for me, get full tape. You forget where berries are planted. Oh, yes, that is so me. <laughs> I do that. Yes, yes, I thought so. I'm the same way. I feel sort of kinship with you. You can have this bogitch app. And we get ourselves the berry searcher. So I did allude to this a little bit earlier when we were picking berries. But this is another poke at you app. That's two in one episode. That's a record. And let's find it. Where are you now? Where are you now? I always go the wrong way. So, here you have a... Well, let's bring it up. All right. Uh, so, as you can see, the Berry Searcher app is basically just a whole map of the Sinnoh region uh, that we can have on our screen, and it will indicate where you you personally have planted berries. Uh, it will also indicate kind of the level of growth. So, once the berries are ready, they will appear on the map, so you can go pick them up, and then you don't have to forget where you've planted the berries. Which, honestly, I know they kind of, it's, you know, kind of like a meme that, you know, it's berry mechanics, but this is absolutely superbly useful particularly if you get some good berries and you actually are like you know farming them either if you want uh, any accessories uh, from the ladies over in Floroma town or if you're just you know farming them for competitive uses really this is super handy so you don't actually forget about them and you don't have to memorize every single spot uh, that you can plant berries so I really can't complain about that I think that was actually a really good change and if you are interested in you know, doing the whole berry thing, that's super helpful. Um, would you like some mulch? If you're going to grow berries, mulch is a good fertilizer. And she'll just sell you the mulch, the different type of mulches that will, uh, you know, benefit different type of berries. Um, please come again. Alright. Nice little pretty house. Your decoration could use a little work, but I, I understand the, you know, <laughs> the flower and berry theme. And with that, I'm actually going to go grab this. I could have phrased that better. I'm going to go pick this berry. There are two pineapple berries. You want to pick them? Yes. And we get ourselves two pineapple berries. Yep. Soft and earthly stay. And with that, we have finally made it. Oh, hello. If you say Hot Home City, I only say this. Pokemon contest. I'm going to enter my darling Pokemon in them. <laughs> PP. <laughs> Hard Home City is a great place. Every year it gets voted the most desirable place to live in Sinnoh. Ooh, well, fancy. And speaking of Hard Home City, here we are in Hard Home City. Bye! We will explore that in the next episode, guys. <laughs> you don't get to see the best place to live in Sinnoh until the next episode. A whole 20, 48 hours. Uh, after this episode comes out, so <laughs> sit in suspense and wait. Uh, with that, guys, we're gonna end the episode off here. So if you liked what you saw, smash that subscribe button, like, dislike, whatever you're feeling like. And until next time, guys, I will catch you later. Okay, you get a. S oh, I was hoping to not do this. Running. Running in the doors, running, running near some more, running in, running in the doors, running in doors, Pokemon 4th Gen.